Welcome everyone to this solemn occasion as we commemorate the passing of Wim Paul Dobson, one of the great personalities of rugby, someone who made an incredible mark not only in South Africa but around the world. Today we have assembled a series of speakers who will be paying their tribute, each touching on an aspect of how their lives were influenced by one Paul. Right now, we start with a short prayer. Good day. We as the Referee Society of the Western Province Rugby Union are unified today in honouring Paul Dobson as a respected member and mentor of our society. As the sole judges of the fact of play, referees are usually isolated and disregarded. We really appreciate empathy and constructive criticism. It came so naturally to Paul Dobson to empathize and uplift his fellow referees. As a committed man of faith, his empathy was part and parcel of his countenance. It was daily visible in his contact with his fellow referees and fellow man. His namesake in the Bible, St. Paul, describes this countenance as a letter of recommendation, actually written by Christ himself to be known and read by everyone. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 2 and 3. This formed the basis of Paul Dobson's integrity. And that integrity enriched us. He described us as referees, almost without exception, as a fine body of men. And he can easily be, be described then as the champion amongst us. It is my sincere prayer that um, Paul's integrity and empathy will form the basis of our society's countenance and our letter of recommendation for times to come. Rest in peace, sir. Amba kakushle umshle kaas. Ons eer in haar gedachtenis, meneer. Rugby and refereeing, like all sports, was racially segregated prior to 1991. The seven referee bodies active in the Western Province entered unification discussions, and in 1992, ahead of schedule, the first unified referee society was established with Mr. Paul Dobson as chairman, a position he headed until 1999. Heading an organization such as Western Province Rugby Referee Society brought many challenges and opportunities. Two of the executive members that served with Wim Paul gives us insight. I met the late Paul Dobson 52 years ago in 1969 when I joined the Western Province Rugby Referee Society as an active referee. Paul was also then an active referee, always willing to help a colleague with any aspects of refereeing to, uh, to share his knowledge of the game. When Hansi Skuman retired as chairman of the old Western Province Referee Society, Paul was elected chairman of the society. I had the privilege of serving with him on the committee. I learned a lot from Paul in running a society as chairman and to always strive for perfection as referee, committee member and chairman. Paul was not only a mentor as a referee, but also a mentor as a committee member and chairman to me personally. In his 1989 annual report, Paul said, as long as we strive for perfection, we are sound and healthy. At the end of 1971, the old Western Province Referee Society and the six Saru Referees 
societies join together to form a brand new Western Province Referee Society. Nobody realized what the size of this new undertaking would be and the amount of work required. A combined committee was formed under the leadership of Paul Dobson with Harry Abrams as vice chairman. The combined committee consisted of 10 members from Old Western Province referees and 10 from the ex saru Who better to lead this new body than Paul Dobson? Paul said, referee now has a wonderful privilege of being able to contribute to the unification of rugby refereeing, but also to the unification of our country. I quote Paul, no group in South Africa achieved a greater degree of unity than the Western Province Rugby Referee Society. I congratulate my members. After only one season at the end of 1992, the society decided that they will elect a committee consisting of 10 members to run the society. At this meeting, Paul was again uh, elected chairman, Harry Abrams, vice chairman. All this was most possible under the leadership of Paul Dobson, the right man at the right time for the right moment. Thank you, Paul. Rest in peace, my friend and colleague. Paul Dobson secured the chairmanship position when he, together with Professor Haynes, stood jointly and the members had to vote and they were equal to accept the members' uh, decision on who would be chairman of the Rugby Referee Society when Hansi Skuman retired. That's number one. Number two, I came into direct conflict with Paul Dobson on Saturday the 18th of September 1999 when Tian Scribano was hit over the head with a bottle at City Park and Michael Vermeulen also was hit with a bottle over his head and I called for a referee strike on the Monday which Paul Dobson did not like whatsoever, but I took him on in conjunction with the Referee Society Constitution, and I was defeated. Number three, I assessed Marius van der Westhuizen in a match between Villages and Durbanville on the 24th of April 2010, where I, in his assessing report, said he would become an international rugby referee when he secured the position of being an international rugby referee, he mentioned my name to Paul Dobson, who requested this assessing report, which I forwarded to him, and he wrote a synopsis of that on the SA Rugby Referees website. The fourth time I took Paul on was when Nigel Owens officiated with South Africa in the international between France and South Africa in November 2016, where a penalty try was on the cards to be awarded to South Africa, and Nigel did not award the try. And he gave his reason as follows, and I've got to read it because it will be applicable to every other referee. He said, they, because I took him on in respect of the words possible and probable, which is in the law book. And here is his reply. If possible is one out of ten, then the word probable is eight or nine. If you have the ball on your own try line, it is possible to score a try. Probably not. He was very, very much on the referee's side and was always in the position of putting the referee first before the game. He always held the referee in high esteem, whether the referee did badly, poorly or magnificently. The referee was paramount and came first 
in terms of rugby in his eyes. He will be absolutely missed because uh, he had facts at his fingertips which no one in the South African rugby environment has at their fingertips today. You could go to him with any question, with any requiring any player's name on the laws, players, referees, and he would not hesitate in giving you the absolute correct answer. There would be no hesitation. There would be no, I'll come back to you in a couple of minutes. The answer was off the cuff, absolutely correct. Western Province Rugby Referee Society has produced many firsts in South African rugby, including the first black test referee and the first female test referee among several others, we now hear from these referees that have made their mark on the international stage. My own refereeing career started very interesting. Um, refereeing at Bishops on the 14s with a coach there, Paul Dobson. Great experience, always being um, a referee at Bishops. And they taught me the the real impact of the game, the ob object of the game, of playing fair, uh, sporting spirit, and also to play with the laws. The highlight of my career was in the 1987, when also in isolation of Africa, rugby, uh, re uh, referees and players and teams, I got my first test match appointed to go to France to do the French and the Australian match. Quite interesting, the Saturday morning, walking into the hotel at Strasbourg, I was sitting at the breakfast table when I just felt a hand on my shoulder and heard this words, Mora Meneer Burger. And who appeared there? Paul Dobson, out of the blue. I never anticipated Paul coming to the test match. And at that stage, he came there specifically to hand me my first test blazer. What an experience, what a match. Looking at players like Philip Seller, uh, Jacques Farouk, uh, Nick Far Jones, Michael Leinach. Great players, great occasion. And I had my chairman there, Paul Dobson, assisting me and mentoring me at my first test match. He also stayed for the second test match at Lille and we had a great occasion. During my career as a referee, he always assisted me, always spoke to me, and as I've said, always mentored me. During the last 10 years, I had the privilege and the honor of being the signing commissioner for World Rugby in South Africa and watching a lot of matches. And after every match, always spoke to Paul, the laws, the laws expert about incidents and also about fair play and also unfair, unfair play, which normally was part of my, part, part of my parcel. Yes, um, the balance of probability was always concerned about the felt, about, about felt play and always assisted Paul and always got his, his, his information and also a lot of his experts, expert advice on certain incidents. Yeah, Paul, fantastic gentleman and as a great Liverpool supporter myself, with his last few words, you'll never walk alone. We'll always remember you, Frederick Berger. We mourn the passing of a father figure, author, and rubbish giant. I personally lost a friend who was always warm and friendly to me and my family. I fondly remember him when he greets me in his house. Mualam Khabawam, and we will continue our conversation in his house. And I never took that for granted. It signified the warmth and love he had for me. When I joined Referees in 1996, he led a big and diverse society with great success. He embraced transformation with dignity it deserved. Um, Paul Dobson was a character larger than life. I was fortunate enough to have known him for the last 15 years. No one has made a bigger impact on the sport of refereeing than when Paul Dobson. Not only in the Western Province Referee Society or in South Africa, but worldwide. 
And yet, I don't think that is what Paul would be remembered for, but rather for the person he was. Paul was loved and admired by everyone that got to know him. It is by now public knowledge that Paul could never say anything bad about anyone, and I tested that theory a couple of years ago. I remember an instance where the whole of South Africa was upset about a game and felt cheated. I phoned him Paul on the Monday asking his opinion on a couple of instances in the game and I remember his response vividly. Well, that was not the way the referee saw it on the day. It is just a pity that the rest of the world saw it differently. In saying that, when Paul indirectly confirmed what I thought, but he did it in such a way that every, everyone's feelings was taken into consideration. His respect for the game and referees was second to none. And I again realized that day what a special human being Paul was. It is a well-known fact that all referees will go through ups and downs. Paul was always there to pick up the pieces and support you when the world and rugby was not kind to you. Not a lot of people know this, but Paul was the mastermind behind the SA Rugby Referees website. And the countless articles he wrote on that website is testimony to the skill he had with words. It was also his brainchild to take video clips of instances that happened in games over a weekend and post it onto the website. It still helps many referees over the world every day to improve. When I go abroad and meet people for the first time and they ask me where am I from, I say I'm from the Western Promise Society. 99% of the people ask me, oh, how is Paul Dobson doing? That is when you realize the impact that he had on all people. I was always astounded by his knowledge of the laws of the game. He had a deep understanding not only for what the law was, but the reason for it being there. That sparked many discussions between us. And just as I thought I could win one argument, he would come back with a ruling number seven of 2005 or ruling 11 of 2003. And that would make me head back with my tail between my legs. I called him the walking, talking rugby law book. A couple of things I learned from Paul. Never be afraid to work hard. Always look after people on your way to the top because they will be the ones that catch you when you fall. The referees are an essential part of the game, but we are not the superstars. Stay in the background and enjoy every game because you don't know when it will come to an end. To the Dobson family, our thoughts and prayers are with you. We have lost a massive pillar in our community, but you have lost so much more. We will miss you and Paul, but we understand. It's your time to rest now. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for the honour of including me with the Western Province refs and uh, paying tribute to the life of Paul Dobson. Um, Paul was a very good friend of mine. As everybody knows, he was a confidant and somebody who in that treated me like a son. I'm very grateful for having shared some part of his life, as I'm sure most of you are as well. Uh, typical of Paul, he probably wouldn't have wanted us to make a big spiel about this type of thing. But like uh, the management at Western Province, I think this is probably uh, very fitting that we pay tribute to somebody who has contributed that much, not just to the union, but hopefully in some special way to most of you who got to know him. Just very quickly, um, how I met Paul is uh, I was based uh, in Cape Town when I was studying at UCT between 87 and 90. Uh, Paul was involved in the West Province Executive and I met him a few times there. I went back to Joburg to try and find a job and uh, my first exchange game was Western Province, be in Northern Transvaal, be at Newlands. And um, it was a great experience for me, uh, one which set me on the road. And uh, Paul Dobson was my assessor that day. And he um, used a lot of fancy words in his assessment. Um, not least of all was the fact that my advantage was like a curate's egg, which meant that sometimes it was very long and sometimes not long enough. And I think, um, you know, it was, a, it was a good starting point for me. And I realized immediately that he was a very smart guy, um, that he knew his rugby and that he had my best interest at heart. Um, a couple of years later, uh, sorry, a couple of years before that, 
Um, I'd refed a game at Villages, I think it was an under 20 match, and um, I was refing in my Northern Transvaal top. I'd been a Northern Transvaal referee in 1985 and 86, and um, Paul came onto the field, gave me a couple of small little tidbits, and then afterwards said, look, I really think the biggest error was the fact that you um, you know, you didn't look the part you wore your Northern Transvaal jersey. And I reminded him that if he hadn't given me a match the night before in the pouring rain, I would have been able to wear my Western Province one. I could see he was trying to keep a straight face, but, um, you know, I think that was the beginning of our relationship as friends. And um, and we, we, we blossomed from then. During my career, um, I used Paul as a sounding board. Um, I'm not an easy cookie. And I think uh, I needed somebody to just, uh, with a level head and somebody who I respected. And I think Paul was, Paul was that guy. Um, you know, throughout my career, he was somebody that I could completely rely on. Later on, after I retired, and the four, five, six years that I was still in Cape Town, I used to meet him often, um, used to fetch him, he didn't like to drive. I used to take him out for a sandwich and a coffee or whatever he wanted, basically. And by the end of it, all he was drinking was a coffee and then in some instances, just water. So, you know, I eventually worked out, um, he's a very low maintenance guy, uh, which was good for me. Um, and that, that was typical of his character as well, is that he never asked for a thing from me ever in all the time that we were friends. So I just wanted to get to the point of, um, you know, how you define greatness. And I think you can look at it in a way where you look at people's achievements, like a Nigel Owens or a uh, Derek Bevan, some people who have done things that others haven't done before them, and I think that's impressive. But I think sometimes it's how you touch people's lives. And, you know, it's not for the history books that people will remember Paul Dobson. You know, he wasn't a state president. He didn't invent something. But his, that doesn't matter because history is written and rewritten and, uh, you know, it's cancelled and and uh, there's various different factions. I think what's important is about the here and now. And I think, um, you know, Paul touched us in a very special way in the here and now. And he did what he could with the hours that he was given in his life. And for that, um, I'm grateful and I know the society is as well. And I was following all the comments that were made about Paul on the internet. And there's certain, it was almost as if it was rehearsed, which obviously it wasn't. But the fact of the matter is that the same key words came out all the time. Kindness, knowledge, wisdom, respect, uh, humility. Uh, he was uh, devoted to uh, rugby and devoted to Margaret as well. I think they were married for 54 years. That's pretty impressive, I'll have to say. Um, I get to 5.4 days and I'm happy. Um, and obviously he had a very good work ethic, which was great. Um, like I said, I find it quite bizarre that everybody says the same things about him. And for me, that is his greatness. His greatness is that he was able to touch people, not only in his smaller circle, his family, the referees, the people that he taught at bishops, but also in the, in the wider world, uh, they knew who Paul Dobson was. And the one thing I can say is that, you know, it's very difficult to be in that space of a journalist. And, um, and Paul managed to do it eloquently he managed to do it with wisdom and he also never said a bad word about anybody which i think was quite remarkable so from my own perspective um, i'll miss his friendship and um, i'll miss his gentle soul um, that laugh um, when he used to find something funny um, usually followed by a cough in his later life um, and I think the world will miss um, his commitment to the cause, his writing, um, like I said, never saying a bad word about anyone, and um, his expertise in law. So I'd just like to um, uh, share my condolences with the Dobson family, uh, particularly Margaret, uh, John, who I know quite well, but uh, also the rest of the family, and to all the Western Province referees in particular, uh, that knew Paul well and loved him uh, as much as I did. And uh, in the words of Paul, um, that he used to use quite often, go well, old boy, go well. 
The link between the society and the Western Province Rugby Union fell on the shoulders of the referee manager, Ben Turan. He gives us his insight. I've met Uncle Paul Dobson in 1991 when I moved from Eastern Promise Rugby Referee Society to Cape Town and joined the Western Promise Rugby Referee Society. At monthly meetings, I realized that Uncle Paul is a respectful man with a very high integrity, honest, open person. Uncle Paul was also part of the committee, the subcommittee appointed by the union, who interviewed me for the position of referee secretary in 1995. I was appointed as referee secretary in 1995 and had the honor to have Uncle Paul as chairman and mentor. He with Uncle Sammy and Willem Brits guided and assisted me with all refereeing daily matters. What an honor it was to work with the three of them and specifically with him. It didn't matter, matter what and how big or small the problem was, he was willing to help, always willing to take calls. In those days, he was still a teacher at Bishop's. I can still remember his words when he gave me the keys of the blue metallic Honda Ballard. He said, Ben, all the years, this was also almost part of my job. I went to airports, fetch referees, they took them to the hotels, bring them to fields, and looked after them. I wanted them to remember the experience in Cape Town, remember visiting Western Promise Rugby, the Special Stadium Newlands, and the Refugee Society Clubhouse. I want you to promise me that whenever it's possible that you will do the same. And it doesn't matter what other societies in the world do and or how they treated our refugees when they visited. I want them to have this amazing, special experience when they visited Cape Town, Newlands and Western Promise Rugby Society. Uncle Paul, I think that's a promise that I kept and I hope I never disappointed you. And I think the referees throughout the world can confirm this, that Western Promise was just special when they ever they visited us. Throughout the world, the referees will confirm that he never in public and even in my presence said anything negative about the referees. Even if Bishops has lost and it was a controversial decision, he was still positive. I can remember one day in the cloak rooms, Johnny's son had a go at the referee, I think on the 21 game. Immediately afterwards when John left, he told all of us that he disagrees with his son John and he complimented the referee I can remember all the year in functions. He always uh, turned to me and thanked me afterwards and told me he's so proud, so proud, very proud to be a member, an honorary life president of this society, one of the proudest and biggest societies in the world of rugby referee. His words were, were always, the standards that we are setting is for South Africa and for the world. And I'm so glad that you people make me proud. Uncle Paul, always before matches, especially in the national referees when visiting South Africa, made time to meet the referees and had a chat with them. He always on Mondays, as a lot of tributes who, who came in, echoed, made time to find the referees and complimented them on their performance. He was always humble, always wanted to help. And he was a person with integrity, a very, very high integrity, not only towards referees, but also like some of the top tributes came in of Mnet Supersport commentators and other people and scholars who came through bishops. I also want to thank him for making me part of his life. As John told me last Friday, Ben, you were part of my father's life. He treated you as his referee's son. What an honor and what, what a compliment it was to me to hear those kind words. I would like to thank Auntie Margaret and the family who allowed Uncle Paul to live his refereeing dreams. I can recall one day when we played a game at Newlands on a Sunday afternoon, I think the storm was played. The Monday morning he phoned me with the words, 
that Auntie Margaret said, Paul, I hope for you that one day there will be rugby in heaven. Otherwise, you are going to be very bored. I am sure that he had his first meetings with Doc Raven, Ian Kirkpatrick, Steve Stradom, Franz Miller, Carl Spannenberg, committee members Harry Abrams, James Apollos, Floppy Keen, Sammy Lutz, Willem Brits, to name a few. Would be interesting to hear what they had to say. Uncle Paul, I salute you as the best ever referees member and chairman and honorary president the world of rugby have ever seen and experienced. Rest in peace. Um, Paul, where do we start? <laughs> I haven't had the chance to meet you and to know you as so many of my other colleagues do, but the time that I have shaken your hand at our meetings and at various functions, it has always been an honor and a privilege to know you, sir. And it is my hope that you will rest in peace and thank you for all the change that you have brought to our society, for all the time that you have put in. And I can just respect your, your ways of attending the meeting so diligently for so many years. Um, it is really respectful. Um, may your soul rest in peace and thank you, sir. My experiences and observations of him, Paul, um, was that he was a gentleman and a scholar, not just of the sport of rugby, but also in life. Um, it was always beautiful to be in his presence because he was so soft-hearted and kind-hearted. And um, he also believed in being just and justice. That is also why he became the voice to those who were voiceless in maybe caused by circumstances. And um, those were things that I really appreciated of him, Paul. And um, I will always remember it, I will always remember him for it. And um, I would always um, crack a joke also when when you see him and the thing is you would always think that he does not know who you are but he he would always remember you it just showed you that the humanitarian humanitarian he was um, the people person he was you know um, always giving it to people thank you Paul I am very honored and blessed to have known uh, Wong Paul. He was truly a blessing in my life. Remembering uh, those days where we had uh, meetings at, at his house, I last spoke to him in April this year when he called me uh, uh, wishing me at, uh, on my birthday. I will really, really miss him. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you. I first met Mr. Dobson when I was a schoolboy on rugby tour to Cape Town in 1977 from Rhodesia, as it was known then. We were a long way from home. We were staying at Bishop's, and on the Friday night before our game on the Saturday, the housemaster, Worm Paul, invited myself as captain of the team together with the hostel head boy for a sherry. I couldn't believe that the housemaster would treat us with such an honor. It was only one small glass, I must add though. Fast forward almost 20 years and I'd moved to live in Cape Town and joined the society in 1996. 
and of course, Wurm Paul was chairman at the time. That offer of a sherry to a schoolboy was, in my mind, just a typical example of the humility and equality that he treated everyone in life. You have left many indelible memories with many people around the world. Go in peace, Wim Paul. Firstly, I'd like to say thank you to the Western Province uh, Referee Society Executive for extending to us this kind of opportunity to pay tribute to Mr. Dobson. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you that you realize that there are many of us who, who want to pay tribute to, to this great man. I'd like to say that Mr. Dobson was the Madiba of Western Province Referees Society. He truly was a Madiba type person, a person who sought reconciliation, a person who brought different referee societies from different provinces and different areas of our community. He brought all those leaders together and was able to forge and be part of the process of forging a, a new identity for Western Province uh, Rugby's Referee Society. And, and you can imagine the different leaders with their different points of view and, their, and all the things they wanted to have part of the society. And Mr. Dobson was able to, to lead the organization through what I would consider probably its most turbulent history. 1993, 94 were, were difficult years. There were many, many struggles within um, the, our communities and within rugby and there was lots of challenges, but Mr. Dobson always helped us to understand that, that we needed to serve rugby, we needed to serve our communities, and we needed to do our very best, be ambassadors for rugby. He didn't only teach us to be ambassadors for Western Province, but he taught us to be ambassadors for rugby. And so my tribute to Mr. Dobson is this, that, Sir, thank you for teaching me about servant leadership. Thank you for teaching me that it's not all about seeking glory and stirring my ego, but it's about doing my best for rugby and doing my best in everything that I do. It's been a privilege to have known Mr. Dobson for 27 years and Mr. Dobson had a presence about him, a huge presence. Whenever he walked into the room, you, you just wanted to be in his company because they would always, he would always share something with you. He'd always encourage you. He'd always bless you. He'd always say something kind, something nice. And so it's a privilege to have known him. I also want to say thank you to his family for sharing him with us. I want to say thank you for Ms. To, to Mrs. Dobson for sharing her husband with us. It cannot be easy, it would not have been easy to have to have not have your husband with you for many, many evenings where late at night you'd still be busy in meetings and, and leading and preparing and, and organizing things. And so thank you for sharing him with us. Also to his, his, his um, sons and daughters, just thank you for sharing your dad with us. And so it's, a, it's been a tremendous privilege to have known him. I'm going to miss Mr. Dobson, there's no doubt about it. I'm going to miss his presence. But above all, I think the most, the, most, the, most thing, the most thing that I will miss about Mr. Dobson is just his kind heart. Also want to say to the, to the chairpersons that have, that have led the society subsequent to Mr. Dobson, all of them have taken something out of Mr. Dobson's leadership style. And so this journey of excellence continues because he started it. And so thank you to the chairpersons that have continued on in the legacy of Mr. Dobson. And so thank you for keeping this society on its journey of excellence. And Mr. Dobson will be proud of all of you because you continued what he had started. So I just want to say thank you to you also because in your leadership, you have honored Mr. Dobson. Um, it's a privilege to have been able to do this tribute. And again, I want to thank the executive for giving us this opportunity. Paul, the absolute legend of rugby referees, you are truly missed and my sincerest condolences to the family. I will always remember you as someone who just cared so much about me as a person as much as he cared about my performances as a referee. I'll always remember our phone calls and our catch up and our emails. I, I'm not sure what I'll do going forward uh, when it comes to those big games and I know I could, I could call on Owen Paul for the best advice and the kindest words to support me. And I just, I just know that we'll truly miss you. And oh, what a loss for the rugby community. A 
young referee who started his career at Western Province and went on to achieve international and national honours is now the current chairman. Back in 1993 in my matric year at Spine Road High School, my coach Nazim Adams suggested that I consider refereeing as my playing skills was not as top-notch as I thought it was. I started attending referees monthly meetings with the then late Um Daniel Adams, who lived in Eastridge, which is playing not too far from where I stayed in Tafelser. This was when I met the then chairman of Western Province Referees, Mr. Paul Dobson. I remember how in the car on our way to the meetings, Mr. Adams had so many good things to say about the new chairman and what a great feat he and his team of executive members achieved in unifying rugby referee societies in the Western Province. It was later though that I realized the impact that Paul Dobson had on the world of rugby and rugby refereeing specifically. On my return to the game in 1999, I remember always seeing Paul in the meetings, at our fitness test and even writing exams with us. When he engaged us as youngsters, he spoke to us with respect and treated us like he treated his peers, our seniors and leaders. He never raised his voice and in conversation, I found out that he taught at the school opposite the road from where I was teaching. Back then, I received a lot of encouragement from Paul to become the best teacher I can be, but also to stay humble and to give of my best to the young men who were placed in my care. Very similar to our jobs as referees. The more I engaged with Paul, I still can't get used to saying that, the more I was in awe of who he was and what he had accomplished. Wim Paul was very involved in SA referees and in my early days on the South African panels accompanied us to our national camps. It was here where I really got to know the man behind the name, the humble soul who never wanted any accolades for what he did behind the scenes. At some of these camps, referees had some tough times and during heated debates and discussions, a very calm and composed voice would start to speak and everybody, including the management, went absolutely quiet as we knew words of wisdom was about to struck us. Like most referees I knew, had a great sense of humor and in his calm demeanor would drop an hilarious joke and would have us all in sticks. When Paul showed interest in all our referees, every weekend when I was appointed to referee wherever in the world, I would get a phone call from Paul to wish me well on my travels and with the game itself. If the match was televised, I knew I would be able to get a fair assessment from Paul on Monday or Tuesday. His timing was also impeccable. It was almost like he felt that I needed to be spoken to at that particular moment. I know for a fact that I wasn't the only referee who experienced the scaring side of Um Paul. Um Paul's emails to me when he needed me to answer questions in the SA referee's Q&A always started with, Dear Joey, I'm sorry to bother you. Always such a considerate person of others. In an email from Paul on October 24, 2015, two days after being elected to the Office of Chairperson of Western Province Referee Society, Paul, who was a Latin teacher, sent me a one-liner. Service Severum Dei. I obviously had to Google it as I knew. I had to have a serious, it had to have a serious meaning, otherwise um, Paul wouldn't have sent it. I replied in a one-liner, the servant of the servants of God. He then responded with, so, I knew you'd understand Latin, you didn't be a term in other words. I responded with, aha, Google, can't, Google can do wonders, just knew you wouldn't send me something if it didn't make sense in my life. I was voted in by the servants of the game, so therefore I serve them. All decisions made must be in the interest of the referee. Is that what you're saying? His response to that question, yeah. No need for a lot of words to get the point across. A point well received and part and partial of my reflection on a daily basis. 
When Paul became an integral part of our inner circle when it came to leading this great organization, he was part and partial of most, if not all, of the crucial decisions I made so far as a chairperson. I'm going to miss his number on speed dial and the emails to apologize for not being able to attend the referee's monthly meetings. I asked him, Paul, to not attend the meetings as I was aware that his health wasn't great. The best and Tony Margaret was not well either. Again, this legend of the game responded to me, if I can make it, I will certainly be there. In April 2019, I wrote to him, Paul, SA referees have awarded him with a long service award and that I, that I would like to hand it to him at the monthly meeting. But if he's not able to attend, a delegation of the executive will come to his house to hand it over. When Paul responded, Mr. Chairman, thank you so much. I'm afraid that things have not gone well of late, but with the help of my son, I should like to attend this evening. You are so kind that it would be pretty gross of me not to do so. I shall even try to dress suitably. I presume the meeting is this evening, Paul, as I was baptized long ago. In his address to the members on that particular night, when Paul said, and I quote, I saw these new referees putting their hands up today, like I did in 1968. And if they can get the happiness I got, you're not serving anything. Actually, the society serves you, rugby serves you, and it makes you better. When Paul was all about us enjoying what we are doing, he was about allowing rugby refereeing to make us better people and being our authentic self. When Paul had a high regard for referees, in his words, referees are almost without exception, a fine body of men. In the midst of the respect of the, the respect the referee campaign last year, when Paul called and said he knows it can't be easy on me or the executive, but he wanted to thank us for caring so much about our referees that we are willing to go through uncomfortable moments to achieve the outcome set. The fact that we placed the referees foremost in our decision making made him a very happy man. The tributes we've seen from the rugby world and especially the refereeing world indicates the role that Paul played in refereeing circles. The latest of those attributes done by the SA Referees Department summarize what Paul was all about. People from all walks of life brought together by the whistle. One common goal to be the best that they can be as match officials and persons. Paul Dobson reached far and wide. We are privileged as a society to have had him as a member for 52 years. A half a century of wisdom imparted on thousands of people. We'll never be able to have that again. And Paul, you are part of what and who we are. Even though you again reiterated in a mail to me on 28 April 20, 2020, where you said, may I just say that nothing that we achieved when I was chairman was solely my doing. There were wonderful men on the committee on, at the time who made the society good. Close quotes. I hear you and Paul, but sir, those great men followed their leader, and that was you. Thank you for being there for us, all of us. Thank you for the foresight that you and your peers had in 1992. You made things better and allowed the generations to follow to get a fair crack at the title. I appreciate your kind words to me throughout my refereeing career and your support and advice the last four years. You are joining a few of the stalwarts of the society and I hope they respect your position of honorary life president and let you referee all the important games, even though I know you will forward that opportunity to someone else. Thank you for being a father to us and mentoring us. You were there for me when I fell to pieces after the passing of Willem Brits and my dad. Whenever I think of important moments in my refereeing life, I see you there. You may be gone physically, but your memory will, will be all dear in my heart. I'm sure you wouldn't want us to make a big fuss of you, but you have been instrumental in many of the successes of this organization and of us as individuals. This poem by Arnold Crompton resonated with me 
and would probably be something that you would say to us. Instructions. When I have moved beyond you in the adventure of life, gather in some pleasant place and there remember me with spoken words old and new. Let a tear if you will, but let a smile come quickly, for I have loved the laughter of life. Do not linger too long with your solemn solemnities. Go eat and talk, and when you can, follow a woodland trail, climb a high mountain, walk along the wild seashore, chew the thoughts of some book which challenge your soul. Use your hands some bright day to make a thing of beauty or to lift someone's heavy load. Though you mention not my name, though not thought of me cross your mind, I shall be with you. For these have been the realities of my life for me. And when you face some crisis with anguish, when you walk alone with courage, when you choose your path of right, I shall be very close to you. I have followed the valleys. I have climbed the heights of life. Paul, I want to thank your family for sharing you with us. The rugby world is poorer without you in it. Rest easy. When Paul's passion for rugby was bound to rub off on his family, his son John, who is now the Stormers head coach. Good afternoon, and thank you very much for the privilege of letting me say a few words, which I promise will be brief, at this very thoughtful and moving memorial service uh, for my father, who was so very, very fond of all of you, as you know. Um, yeah, the, the one that he did say to ask me that instruct in fact that I wasn't to, 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 to speak at his, at his funeral. Um, I don't know if that was to protect me or to spare him from embarrassment. Uh, and for once, I'm sort of going to listen to him. Uh, I haven't my whole life, as you well know. Otherwise, I would never have been brushing past Oum Ben, to who we are very, very grateful as a family, into the cloakroom to have a good go at Jeddahs or Marius or whoever, whoever Rasta, whoever the target of the day, of the day was. Um, I think if it's anything, one of yeah, but uh, that behaviour won't happen because it's so uh, inappropriate for the life of my father. For his life outside of, obviously, his family was re refereeing, and in particular, the Western Province Rugby Referee Society, of which he was inordinately proud. And I think, as a family, our most touching, our most touching um, or reassuring sort of sense of, our, of, of, of Paul's value and values uh, has been from the refereeing fraternity and the Western Province Society in particular. That brings us to the end of this memorial service. A special thank you to those who spoke today and the many others who sent their own personal messages. Rest in peace to Om Paul Dobson. Mm -hmm.